the Taliban uh, openly stating that they were never going to share their power. This was, I believe, shot back in January that once again shows that they had no, absolutely no interest whatsoever in, uh, in ever sharing power with the Afghan government. And uh, I'm fairly certain that the American government also knew that that was the case, but uh, here is further proof. And then we'll get to some good news in a second. I, I don't, I'm not dehydrated. I don't seem kind of tired. It's because my back is up again. And here's the video. Sharia courts. Disputes here are settled. There's little due process in these Sharia courts. Disputes here are settled by mobile justice. And in some cases, Taliban commanders who have the autonomy to carry out punishments how they see fit. Everybody shut the fuck up about yoga. I literally do yoga and shit. Shut the fuck up, please. Son, I'll be back. You just smacked him. What you're seeing right now is pretty much a Taliban court. You have in front of me is a local Taliban commander talking to somebody who's been accused of stealing. In terms of the cases that you've dealt with today, what are the potential punishments that they could be served in the end? اوس داسې د غټ غلو د پوره مثلا د لاس او سوال شته کې کنه د غټ غلو د پوره او د غوزو کې چې د شریعه بیبی اوس په هغه جرم کې دایره شي چې شي چې په شریعت کې تشته شي چې په قران کې دا غلط مو پیدا کیو د مان دت واز سات ان فرنټ اف یو دت واز اکیوزد اف سیلینګ دا دو دوز لوک لایک مراد ا لیټل بیټ پټنشلی ات دی اند اف دی کورټ کیس هی مایټ هاف هیز هاند کاف غلط د دې خپل اصول او طرز العمل شته نو ان شاء الله خو شته ولې نه هیومن رایټس اورګانایزیشنز وود لوک ات دیس سین and see men who don't have representatives, who don't have anybody putting forward their case, who have people who don't necessarily have the judicial or legal experience to be able to be handing out punishments, deciding the fate of an individual. And they would say that that isn't justice. What would you say to them? یو د سوال د همکانه دی د موږ هر از دکړه د موږ هر عمل د موږ هر کردار د موافق او مطابق د قران او د شریعت دی ایزا په نور هیڅ شی نشته کې سو از دیس د جاستیس سیستم دت یو وود لایک تو سی امپلیمنټډ ان کابل اند اکراس افغانستان نو دا خو عملی دی په دوک شک نشته هغه سو لایک هاو ډو یو فوکین سو هیرز ا کپل ډیفرنټ تینګز وین آی سی ستف لایک دس ایم لایک هاو د فوک ډو یو ګیټ دس مادر to realize like you're out of your mind okay you're out of your fucking mind dude you are so lost in the goddamn sauce dude like education is one thing but they're literally going to prevent it so hech de marata control lon de islamia marata control lon po go ke pakat an daga de quran de shariat rag dai aw am daga amal ka wali nur hech chain ashta ke would you consider bringing back stoning if you were to be in government is that something that you would do for adultery ادود زناد پر بالکل جزاش تا اک سنگسار و کوم جزا چې په شریعت کې ورته مطابق تو حال سبه کتل کیږي د غود سن سبه کتل کیږي د غود بخش بخش دی کې اټول کې ذکر دی کوم شای چې په قران او په شریعت کې ورته کوم جزا و هغه جزا مطابق ما د جزا سره ایدا غشته دی هند the joins me now from turkey hind you spent some time with the taliban what was that like and what did you learn about what afghanistan might be underneath them Yeah, it was quite surreal. We spent around five days and two nights with the Taliban, and what was really clear was just how powerful they were, and that despite what was coming out of Kabul or Washington, the Taliban had absolutely no intention to take part in intra-Afghan talks, which would lead to them uh, integrating into what was the current political system in Kabul. In terms of their strength, they have a whole new generation of fighters. Some of them weren't even bored when the war began. By the way, for the record, when you get fucking mad at these dipshits, like, talking like this, remember that, like, they learned this shit somewhere. Where did they learn this? Who funded those schools? Okay? Who hyped up? Who put their fucking finger on the goddamn scale and decided that, like, 
decided that like this kind of education is not uh, bad actually it's a really good way to motivate motherfuckers to go out and die you know makes really good warriors because someone did that that someone is the british and american imperial forces okay it's the truth by way of saudi arabia i love that you said saudi and china yeah, dude, China loves uh, uh, Wahhabist uh, fundamentalists, dude. Lol, yeah, the U.S. trained them in Sharia. What do you mean? That's literally what this is. I wanted to show you guys Bitter Lake, uh, the famous Adam Curtis documentary, uh, but there's like too much fucking TOS. You sure it's not the religion, Kappa? Okay, guys. There are Afghan people who are fucking progressive and also Muslim. What the fuck are you talking about? This is a very specific kind of fucking uh, interpretation of Islam that is completely bastardized. How am I having these arguments with like Sam Harris heads from like 2014, 2015 still? What these dudes believe is completely fucking insane. Yeah, there were literally communists in the 70s in Afghanistan, dude. You're worse than Alex Jones, lol. Sure, buddy, lol. Sure, buddy, lol. Sure, buddy, lol. It's, uh, I'm Alex Jones. I'm worse than Alex Jones for saying that, like, Wahhabist fundamentalism is a product of imperialist forces, both uh, uh, Britain and also the United States, like, literally fucking putting their thumb on the scale and aggressively funding uh, these, uh, these movements as a literal direct fucking counterweight towards like revolutionary communist uh, uh, Muslim uh, organizations and militants because they were terrified of the USSR influence and also uh, partially because they thought that this would be uh, the best way to maintain stability. Ironically, in a exact identical capacity to how they gave the uh, gave the entirety of Afghanistan to the Taliban literally this week I mean they did that they literally did that they did that this past week is it that fucking crazy to think is it really that fucking crazy to think that the America uh, like that America would be responsible for a gigantic uh, chunk of the uh, extremist activity as a direct consequence of like funding uh these extremist positions because they think that this is like the best way to offer stability did you mean the taliban adopted the u.s british imperialistic ruling structure not their core beliefs like sharia law no dude i'm saying that there are just like with everything else just like with every kind of fucking religious belief it's not a monolith people aren't like automatically uh fundamentalist by birth the Islamic world is gigantic. Okay? There are plenty of different belief structures within Islam. America decided to put the fucking finger on their scales and prop up some of the worst fucking most fundamentalist ideologies because they saw it as an adequate counterweight to more progressive Muslim groups that were forming because those progressive Muslim groups were forming alongside uh, socialist ideology or socialism. That's how it works. It's like looking at, I don't know, fucking psychopathic Scientologists and thinking that everyone in America is like that. Or looking at the Westboro Baptist Church or like three percenters and being like everyone in America is like that. It's like looking at fucking white supremacy. It's like looking at like the Klan okay which is also a christian organization at the same time and being like well everyone is like everyone in america is like kkk that's how it works right when that's not the that's not the case america is a great example of this white evangelical protestants are a minority in this country but they're a very active and very vocal minority so the republican party feels the need to cape to all of their interests and all of their demands, right? And ultimately that even works out in a way where like their demands and their desires are 
expressed in our form of governance. That does not mean that like they make up a hundred percent of the uh, of the of the country. Tommy, bro, are you funded by the CIA? No, I'm funded by your mom. Yes, dude, the CIA loves funding people who are routinely talking about all of their fucking operations in a negative light. They love funding people like that. If that's the case, why doesn't just funding a counterpoint work just as well? Well, because who's going to do that? Why would America be motivated to fund a, a, a socialist, revolutionary, more progressive fucking uh, organization against the Taliban when the Taliban itself is offering them the stability that they need? They don't give a fuck about whether women could go to school or not. I don't think anyone is saying everyone in Afghanistan is like that. They're saying Islam is a bad influence on the overall situation. But it's not Islam, dumbass. That's the point I'm trying to make. You have to get out of this like monolithic way of thinking about Islam in general. It's very difficult for you to, to do so. I get it, but it's like the r slash uh, r slash atheist r slash atheist attitudes towards like Christianity. Like Christianity was used to justify racism and slavery. It's like yeah, exactly. But also liberation theology was at the forefront of abolition. So. Religion is like a tool, okay? It's a tool to control. It can be for good and it can be for bad. In a lot of overwhelming instances, it's used for bad. So you hyper-focus on that. But ultimately, not every Christian is a fucking QAnon psychopath in America, right? Yeah, but tools for control are bad. No, they're not. No, they're a necessity. It's a constant, okay? I'm sorry. That's some fucking utopian anarchist uh, ideal right there. And they were all armed Idealism and they also showed right us how to make their weapon of choice, which was IEDs. And in terms of the older fighters, they had an incredible knowledge of the region and the terrain. And regardless of what capabilities you had as an army, the United States uh, and their allies or even the Afghan government would find it. And they did find it impossible to battle against something like that. In terms of the future and what that holds for Afghanistan, we also spoke and spent some time with the Afghan government around seven months ago, and we spoke to the National Security Advisor, Hamdullah Mohib. In a conversation when we were speaking about potential intra-Afghan talks and where they were going, because at that point they were failing quite significantly, he told me that he still believed that they could convince the Taliban to take part in a democratic system or in their current political system. We think that democracy is the best way or the best system because in that the Taliban can exist. Do you really believe that the Taliban would ever support a democracy? Do you honestly believe that? He did not know. Uh, I think we can convince them. And it was clear even back then that that was a complete fantasy because every time we would speak to the Taliban, every time we'd have a conversation, we'd put to them what the government had said to us and we would ask them, do you have any intention in partaking in these intra-Afghan talks and integrating into the political system? And their answer would be repeatedly no. They're Why would they? They knew that if they fucking sat it out and waited it out until America offered them the country, and they did. The intention has always been to rule Afghanistan and for Afghanistan to adhere to their very specific interpretation of Islamic law. Well, thank you, Hind, for your reporting, and we'll talk again, I'm sure. That's Hind Hassan, who's in Turkey. All these daily streams, whether big or whether small, so there he is again. Hassan is streaming. Hassan is streaming. You.